again and welcome back to another Wise and Unreal tutorial where today we're going to look at RTPCs which stand for Real Time Parameter Controls. Basically they're parameters, you can use them to kind of manipulate your sounds whilst the game's running based on numerical data that the game provides. That by the way is just a fancy way of saying we can check something in the game and then change our sound depending on it. Before we get started, I just want to quickly point out to you guys that scottgamesounds.com has recently had a makeover. Look how good it looks. It looks so professional. I'm well proud of this. This took me ages to make by the way. Uh, so if you want to if you want more support learning about um, implementation of audio into games, this is the place to be. I really want to turn this website into you know, a hub for learning about audio implementation. At the moment there's mostly a lot of FMOD and Unity stuff on there, but you'll find all the scripts and information about these tutorials on there as well. Uh, for example, Blueprint scripts you, which you can download and C-sharp scripts if you're following any of the FMOD and Unity tutorials. What you can also do now, this is something new I'm trying out, is you can book a lesson or a consultation with me. So if you're really struggle, struggling with something, maybe you've got like a big deadline on a project coming up and you need some help, feel free to book a lesson with me and we can do a one-on-one, -on -one, well, lesson over Zoom online. So it'll be a video call, we can look at your screen, we can really dig into the code. At the moment, I'm just limiting it to things involving FMOD and C-sharp and Unity because you know they're my super strong points. And when you book your first lesson, you'll also be able to download a free sample pack that contains a load of urban ambiences recorded in Central Europe. So there's no reason for you not to book one really. But with that out of the way, uh, let's jump into why is it unreal today. Okay, so let's dive into the tutorial. So like I said, we're looking at RTPCs in WISE and we're gonna see how we can manipulate them in an Unreal project. First, let me quickly show you uh, the game in Unreal. Uh, it's basically, I quickly set this up from uh, a little tutorial you can find on YouTube. I'll link it in the description if you wanna create it yourself. All it is, is a little first person game with the default assets that Unreal provides you with. Uh, and you see these cubes over here? Well, they're actually evil. And you can see they kind of chase you and explode if you know you kind of get the angle right. Uh, they explode, and when they explode on you, they're going to do a little bit of damage. The player has five pieces of health. Each time they explode on the player, the player loses one bit of health. And you can also shoot them, blow them up for a bit of fun. But if you listen, things are getting more muffled the more damage I take. So I'm now on one health. And so if I touch this last cube, I die and the explosion is completely muffled because that low pass filter, the value of it's being set every time we take damage. So anyway, that's the game. Let's jump into Wise first of all and see what I've set up. Okay, so the first thing I did was imported a WAV file. Nice and easy, just a grenade explosion thing I made not too long ago. If I play it for you, just a kind of general explosion. Done a few things, they're not really too important for this lesson, but I'll quickly tell you what I've done. If we double click this little mini Pepsi sign here that's not colored correctly, uh, I've basically added a little randomization to the volume, so it's not always at the same volume every time. Uh, and if I click the little Pepsi icon next to the pitch, I've done the same with the pitch. Once I loaded in that WAV file, what I then did is I went to my events tab, I created a new event called explosion, which you do by clicking on the default work unit, and you click create new event there. Then I found my sound effects object, kind of set it to play whenever this event is triggered. Now we've touched on this kind of stuff, basic basic triggering of audio in previous lessons. So I'll link them to you in a card somewhere or in the description. And again, not gonna talk about them too much. Now what I wanted to do with the parameter or the low pass filter effect is I wanted to make sure that it not only uh, filtered the explosion, but it filtered everything, the player's footsteps, the gunshots, the lot. So what I did is I went to audio and I opened up the default work unit under master mixer hierarchy and I made sure I was working with the master audio bus. This right here is the master bus. If you make any changes to this, you're essentially making changes to all of your sounds, okay? Now, first thing we need to do is make our parameter. So to do that, we want to go to game syncs uh, and in the game with parameters folder, we select the default work unit and we click this little button here, create new parameter. Uh, which is what I've already done, so I'm just going to delete that one I've just created there. What I did is I called mine low health because obviously this is the parameter I want to use in order to read the player's health. 
So if we double click on it, we can see what I've done. Luckily, the parameter settings in Wise are nice and simple. All we need to do really is set a min and a max value for this parameter. Now, again, this is going to read the player's health and the player's health can range from between five when they're you know alive at max health and zero when they're dead. So I made sure the minimum value is zero, the maximum value was five, and the default value is five. Basically, what value is this parameter going to start at? Seeing as the player is going to start at five health, made sense to start it at five. Once I did that, I quickly clicked on the default work unit again, hit Control S on my keyboard to save, Command S probably if you're on Mac, and the parameter's done. Right, now we need to go back to our uh, master bus and we need to now use that parameter to control a low pass filter effect. So let's double click on it and let's go to RTPCs, basically where you add parameters to stuff. Uh, and as you can see, I've already added the filter. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly delete it. Let's go, cut, there we go, and I'll start again. Okay, so to control a property or an effect like the volume or a low pass filter using a parameter, uh, you click on these two arrows here and you select what you want to control. Uh, low pass filter for me, so I'm going to click on that. And now you need to select which parameter you want to control that effect. So next to your effects, you click on uh, the arrows to the right of it, go to game parameters and select the parameter of your choice. So for me, I'm going to choose low health. Then you get a little graph and using this graph, we're basically going to design how we want the uh, parameter to affect the effect, if that makes sense, how we're affecting that low pass filter. So when the parameter is at five, aka when the player's at five health, uh, I'm just going to leave it at zero. I don't want any change. But as the value of the parameter and the player's health gets lower, I want the low pass filter to kind of increase or decrease. You get what I mean. I want it to start filtering. So what I'm going to do is take this dot at the end and I'm going to drag it all the way up to about 75. So it's just a linear graph. Uh, and again, as the, the health gets lower, the effect, the low pass filter effect, is going to increase in intensity. And when it gets to zero, it will reach its maximum of 75. It's percentage, so 100%, if we set this to 100%, that would be completely filtered all the way down to 20 hertz. So 75, I'm guessing, you know, it's three quarters, so what, about 500 hertz, roughly. Once you've adjusted your settings, you can give uh, your sounds a test. So this is the master audio bus again, so really I can test any sound I want. I'm gonna click on the grenade explosion and play it in the transform control tab. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can see, you can even control it from the uh, effect itself, or rather, sorry, the sound itself. So if I turn the, if I come here and just change the health, low health parameter to two, as you can see, I've got RTP selected here and the low health parameter here. So change it to two, play it again. You can hear it's filtered. Let's change it all the way to zero. Sounds really filtered. So what I'm doing here basically is I'm just demoing it. What you could do using the transport control is just test values, test settings, and see what they sound like. So once you've made all the changes you want to your master bus or any of these sound effect objects that you know you're using parameters for, make sure you save the default work unit there in Control S or Command S again. And with that, pretty much good to go. So the last thing to do is press F7 on your keyboard to go to the sound banks window and you're gonna generate all your sound banks. Then in Unreal, I'm going to find my uh, Wise Audio folder. This is a folder I've made just for organizing things. I'm going to find, first of all, my uh, bank that I put my explosion sound in. Oh, at the moment, I'm just putting all my sounds in, but you know what I mean. Find your banks, basically. Right click and click Generate Sound Bank. Just to update Unreal and tell it we've made some changes in Wise, so it needs to check for those changes. Then I'm gonna to go to my Events folder. Again, you can do this anywhere. And I've already made an explosion event, but this is something you'll need to do if you're making your event from news. So just gonna quickly test my explosion event work. So I'm gonna right click it and hit play event. Brilliant. Okay, so the first thing I needed to do was trigger that sound to play whenever those cubes impacted with the player. First, I need to find my cube actor, the object, the cube itself, in my content folder, uh, which in mine is under blueprint. So here it is, evil cube pawn. So I'm gonna double click on that. Again, the way I set this up, this these exploding cubes, there'll be a link in the description so you can follow that tutorial. And as you can see, there's a little bit going on inside the blueprint, so let me quickly explain uh, what's happening. First things first, this event is triggered whenever the cube hits the player, okay? That's nice and easy to understand. It's called on component hit, and it's basically checking for any collision. So once the cube collides with the player, we move over to the sequence node. The sequence node is basically, basically gonna do things in a specific order. So starting at the top, 
then moving its way down. So the first thing it does, everything coming off of pin zero. So let's move up our line and look at what's happening. All these boxes here, uh, I'm not gonna talk about them. Again, they're in that tutorial, so check that out. But once it's done all this, which by the way, all it does basically is trigger that little particle effect, the little explosion. Uh, once it's done all that, we come over to post event. So post event is uh, an, a wise node and it's what you can use to play sound. So using post event, which by the way, to bring up, right click, type post event, and it's there, that one. You need to select the event you want to play. So it's the event we just created, that explosion event. Then you also need to decide where you want to play that sound at. Now I just want to play my sound at wherever the cube is at this present time. So basically, I need to reference the cube. So to delete that, go to the actor pin, drag a little line over, type in self, and you want to select get a reference to self because this blueprint is attached to the cube I want to play the sound at. So I'm basically just saying, play it at its location. And that's it, nice and easy. So I'm just gonna quickly save that, hit compile, and that bit's good to go. Right, going back to the sequence, once it's done all that, once it's displayed those particles and played the explosion sound, the next thing it's gonna do, if we come over here, is destroy uh, the component. So basically, when the cube collides with the player and you know the particles have gone off, it then destroys itself. Poof, gone. And the last thing it does, if we follow the last pin of the sequence node, and this is something I've added, is that it basically takes the first person character that we're controlling, and it's gonna trigger a function from within it. And that function is a custom function I've created, and they're really easy to make, so I'm gonna show you how to make one in a second. So to get access to the blueprint attached to the first person character, I just used this node, cast to first person character, and then I'm gonna quickly redo this bit because this was a bit tricky. Uh, I want to basically access the function, like I said, from within the blueprints attached to the first person character. And uh, normally to basically continue on some blueprint code, you'd move the execute pin along and you decide what you want to do next. So after we've got access to the first person character, we then say, right, now we want to do whatever. But if we search through here, we're not going to be able to find the function that I've created in uh, or attached to my first person character. So in order to access all this information that's within my first person character, I need to drag a line from uh, the bottom pin here that says, as first person character. So now any variables or functions within that blueprint attached to the player I can access. So the name of my function is called damage. By the way, whenever I say function, I mean event. I'm still trying to get, I'm still trying to stop using unity terms and start using uh, unreal terms. So the event I want to trigger is called damage player. Again, I created it myself. I'm gonna show you how to. Now you can see uh, it's, all, it's automatically executed itself. So now once we find the first person character in our world, we're going to execute this event. Okay, so to recap, when the cube hits the player, the first thing it will do is display an explosion effect and play our sound in wise. The second thing it will do is destroy the cube itself or itself. And the third thing it will do is activate an event that is within the blueprint attached to our first person character. So if I quickly go to my content folder, first person blueprint, blueprints, and select the first person character, we're going to see that event which I've created. And here is the event. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to take the player's health, minus one from it, because this is only gonna activate when the cube hits it, so minus one, and then set our parameter in Ys, let's quickly bring it up, it's then going to set that RTPC we created earlier called low health from five or whatever value it is, to one minus whatever value it is, so from five to four and so on. So to create a custom event, you right click anywhere and you type in custom event, and it's this one here with the little arrow, add custom event. Then you give it a name like, hello, I don't know, I'm not very creative today apparently. And then you can call this from wherever. So for example, I'm calling my one I created here called damage player from the cube, which I showed you earlier. Okay, now before we have a look at how this works, uh, what I had to do is create an integer variable. An integer variable is basically just numbers, basically. It's a little container that holds whole numbers. And this is what I'm using to represent the player's health. So to create a variable, you come over to the left, you click the little plus here, plus variable, and you can see you create a new variable. So let's just, for demonstration purposes, let's call this health two. First thing I need to do now that I've created my new health variable, is I need to set its type. By default, the variable will be Boolean, which basically means this variable can be either true or false, 
We don't want that, we want it to be a number. So we need to click on it and we select integer. So now it could be any whole number that we wish. Now alternatively, if you've got a game that has where the health is like decimal places, so it can be anywhere between like, well, five and zero, but it could be like 4.3 or whatever. Instead of integer, you'll wanna come down and select float because float allows you to set values to your variable with decimal places in. But mine, that's not how mine works. I'm just gonna stick with integer. I'm also gonna delete that health to variable because that was just a demonstration. Brilliant, so now I've got my variable. It's time to uh, start changing it and also changing my parameter. So whenever damage player is triggered by that cube we saw earlier, let's drag over here. The first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna set a new value to the health. So we do that by uh, using this node here, set. To bring that up, you just right click and you go set, type in set and then the name of your parameter. Mine's health, and there you go, set health. Next you need to say, okay, what value do you want to set your health variable to? Well, what I wanna do is I want to take whatever value it's currently at and just minus one from it. So the way we do that is we now right click and we type in get health instead of set health. So get health, and there you go, there it is there. Once you've clicked on that, you'll get something that looks like this, a little box with the name of your variable. And this is basically gonna allow you to retrieve whatever value it is at. So it doesn't matter if my player is at five, four, three, whatever health, I could take its value and now minus one from that. To minus one from a variable, we want to type in minus integer. And there the top one is what we want. We want to minus an integer value by an integer value. Now, if again, if your vari variable was a float value and you wanted to use decimal place, you'd instead write minus float and you see there float minus float. So you get a little box like this, as you can see here. So basically whatever value you feed into the top will be minus by the value at the bottom. So by, if I delete that quickly, so by setting the get health uh, node to the top node, I'm basically saying take whatever value the health variable is at and then minus it by whatever value is at the bottom here, which I've just left as one. So health will be minus by one and then whatever value that may be will be set back to the health variable. So one more time, take the health variable value, minus one from it, and then set it back to the health variable. Once it's done that, we can move on to the next part. So the next part is setting the RTPC in wires. Now we've got a new value for health, we need to communicate that to wires. So we use this node here that comes with wires, it's called set RTPC value. And like all these nodes, just type the name of it, set RTPC, and it will come up like that. So this is how it works. Once you've told it to activate by dragging the execute line into this node here, first thing you need to do is tell it which uh, parameter you want to change the value of. For me, I want to change the value of my low health parameter. So as you can see in this box here, I've typed that name in exactly low health. Next, it goes, okay, so we know you want to change low health, but what value do you want to change it to? Uh, again, I want to change it to whatever value my health, param uh, not parameter, my health variable is at. So just like we did before, we get the value of health and we drag it into the value pin. Now what it does, what it's done automatically there is it's created what's called like, I think these are called conversion nodes. If we had a float variable, we could feed it straight into the value pin. But because we're using integers, we need this. Don't worry, it just does it automatically. The last thing on our set RTPC value node is called interpolation time in milliseconds. Basically, do you want to set the new value of your parameter straight away, or do you want it to kind of fade in a little bit? Uh, if you do want it to fade in, then just set a number higher than zero here. So I've gone for 200 milliseconds. So you should hear when I play the game again, the parameter doesn't completely snap or that low pass filter effect doesn't straight away filter. It kind of fades into it smoothly, fairly quickly, but smoothly. And then from there we're done really, but I've added this little extra thing. Basically, I just want to display on uh, the screen what health my player's at, just so I can see everything's working. To do that, you just use the print string node. Again, just right click, type its name in, it will come up. Uh, and again, we want to print whatever value our health variable is at. So I've just, again, I've got the value of my health variable, dragged it into the in string uh, pin, which is basically where it takes in whatever you want to display on the screen. And as you can, and because in string basically, it only takes in characters, letters and words, it's automatically giving me another conversion node. And with that, that's pretty much it. We're now adjusting that parameter we created in wise. Really the only bit that does it is this node here, set RTPC value. The rest is mainly to do with the mechanics of the game itself. For example, uh, 
triggering the uh, explosion sound and adjusting the having a value to adjust like the health. Uh, before we quickly, I'll quickly show the game again so you can hear what it sounds like one more time. But some few things I didn't point out, which I want to quickly go back over. If you are following along, let's go back. If you are following along with the uh, tutorial of the exploding cubes, uh, one thing you'll need to do is basically it's going to use some uh, audio within Unreal to play that exp its own explosion sound. Uh, you don't want that because we're using wires for this. So just type in explosion. Select the blueprint effect explosion here. That should be the first thing that comes up. Go to viewport. Ah, here we go. So in the components tab here, go to explosion audio. And it should have a little explosion WAV file loaded in. Just uh, get rid of it, basically. Just click the little drop-down menu here. Click clear. And now it won't play any sounds. And you can then add your own sounds in. Also, in case you're completely new to kind of programming in general and you're wondering how the player's actually dying using that health variable that just seemed like a number, basically, and was only controlling our parameter, what I did is I went to Blueprints, uh, Open Level Blueprints, and this is a blueprint that affects, affects the entire level, uh, and I basically made some changes here. Uh, but all I'm doing is basically I'm getting the first-person character, uh, and then I'm checking to see if the health of it, that health variable we created, is equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, then I'm destroying it and getting rid, getting rid of it from the scene. So one more time, let's play our scene and just, I won't talk, we'll just have a listen to how it sounds. works pretty well don't you think so yeah let me know if you want to see any more wise and unity uh, no not unity wise and unreal tutorials or if you want me to do more unity and fmod stuff let me know either way recently did a little survey asking everyone who signed up to my newsletter which by the way if you do you'll receive a free lesson let's quickly go back from my online course the fmod and unity essentials course everyone on my that newsletter recently did a survey telling me what they wanted to see and i think i've got a really good idea kind of i think so anyway i've no i have i've got a good idea of what where i want to take school game sounds i really like i said i want to turn this into something special you know something that really helps audio anyone mus music composers and sound designers i've you know who i've been there myself trying to learn audio implementation coming from a world of audio and you know frequencies and stuff and doors it, it can be a bit of a mess and a bit much to take in at first so I really want to turn this into something to focus solely on audio people to kind of show them the ropes, show them what it means to kind of use variables and data and move things around uh, and just kind of help them understand how their audio is going to fit into the development of a game. But I've blabbed on, ignore that. Yeah, let me know if you want to see anything else from this channel is what I'm trying to say. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Henry Scott and I'll see you in the next one.